I personally still like to code by hand a lot. I don't like to outsource my work to AI when it comes to proper engineering tasks. However, there are certain things that need to be done because they're important, but I really don't want to do them on the one hand because I'm not really good at them, and on the other hand because they waste a lot of my time and I don't enjoy doing them. Examples would be designing presentations or visually appealing documents or reports, or maybe a mock-up or a concept for a website. In other words, these are perfect use cases for generative AI. Now, in this video today, we're going to take a look at Gamma, which is an AI document generator, which allows us to easily create things like websites, presentations, mockups, reports, and more based on all sorts of different inputs. We can provide a basic prompt, a detailed outline, or even just an entire paper and ask it to turn this into a beautiful and professional document. You can also easily use it for free and examine the quality yourself. Now, if you like this video, let me know by hitting the like button and subscribing. But now, let us get right into it. All right, so we're going to take a look at Gamma in this video today, which is, as I already mentioned, an AI document generator. What this basically means is it can create presentations, documents, websites, social media, assets, whatever, based on different kinds of input. You can provide a single prompt, like give me a presentation that compares Django to Fast API to Flask. You can give it a detailed outline, card by card, what you want to have on the different slides, or you can just drag and drop an entire academic paper and ask it to make a presentation based on it. Now, for the sake of transparency, I need to mention that Gamma is sponsoring this video today. So this is a paid integration, but I think this is a very interesting product because you can easily customize every single thing they create. Every image, every text is not just AI generated and you have to take it or leave it. You can edit every single part of the result. And as I already mentioned, you can use all of this for free. They do have some paid plans if you want to upgrade with more powerful AI and with more credit, so to say. But in general, you can do everything we do today with a free plan to get a taste of it. And then you can upgrade if you want to use this on a regular basis. All right. So here I am now in Gamma after the account creation, after logging in, you can see in the top right, I have 280 credits. I forgot how many credits you have when you log in for the first time. I played around with it a little bit already. But basically, I can go here to Gamma's, which is sort of my project. And then I can click on Create New with AI. So I can click on this button here. And now you can see I have four different options. I can paste in text. So I can basically just provide notes or an outline. I can generate from a single prompt, from a single uh, statement, like make a presentation about X, Y, Z. I can import a file or a URL, which would be something like a paper, for example, or an existing presentation, also possible, or I can remix a template. We're not going to take a look at this one, but I want to show you these three today. And I'm going to start with a paste in text. So I can click on this here and I can choose what I want to generate. In my case, I want to generate a presentation. And down here now I can provide notes. Now you can also copy paste these notes from somewhere else. For example, what I can do now is I can copy paste some of my notes from a recent video about Python 3.14 what's new in this update. I didn't copy paste the entire set of notes here because I want to save some credits here by not using 20 slides. But in general, what I have here is I have the intro section, the setup, then something about template strings, something about the deferred evaluation, something about multiple interpreters and something about free threaded Python, which is now officially supported. So these are just the notes that I had for the video. And what I can do now is I can either just use this as one large text or I can structure it into different slides. So down here, you can see what I can do with that. I can generate from notes or an outline, I can preserve this exact text, I can summarize what I want to do here. So I want to generate from an outline, and I'm going to provide the outline by adding these three dashes. So in here, I'm going to say this is the intro, then here, I'm going to call this the setup, then the template strings, the deferred evaluation, the multiple interpreters, and finally here, the free threaded Python is now officially supported. So now I can click on continue to prompt editor, which gets me to this view here. So now I can choose between free form and card by card again. But essentially, these are now the notes for the individual cards, but how exactly I represent them is up to my settings here. So I can say generate, I can say condense or preserve. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to condense down these notes into a presentation, I'm going to say minimal. So I want to have minimal text, I want to have it in English. And now I can choose also a style, for example, night sky, we can also go to view more to see different themes here, we can preview what they look like. I think night sky is quite cool. But yeah, you have many different options to choose from maybe let's look at something more uh, glassy. Let's take this one. This also looks interesting. So we're going to go with that. And down here, you can also select 
image sources. So you can either let it generate images with AI or you can use images from something like Unsplash or from Giphy. The cool thing is you also can replace these images manually afterwards. So we're going to go with AI images for now. And if we don't like them, we can replace them. If you know what you're doing, you can also select specific models here for image generation. This is going to make a difference in terms of the credits. And some of the models are also only available for plus pro or ultra users but this is another customization option here. And then you can also decide what the art style of the images should be. I like to have it abstract, so I'm gonna pick that option. And if you want to, you can also provide some additional keywords here. Now, since I wanna keep this extra concise, I'm gonna scroll up here to additional instructions and I'm gonna say, make the slides very minimal. I want only the most important information and not too much text. There you go. So now we can say six cards in total generate and this is going to generate a presentation. There you go. We can see how it does that in real time. And as I said, the cool thing is every single thing that is generated here is completely editable. So I can scroll up here. We can see what this looks like. I have this Python logo. Maybe I don't like it. So what do I do? I right click it and I say edit image. Now what I can do is I can regenerate it so I can use AI images again, or I can say I want to upload my own image or I want to search for an image on the web. I want to use some stock photos from Unsplash. I can use whatever I want. I personally right now like this logo. I can make it smaller or larger depending on uh, what I want here, but I think this looks fine. Down here we have the UV commands. So for setting up the environment here, we have something about template strings. We have something about the deferred evaluation. We have multiple interpreters here visualized in a nice way. We have also some notes down here. And as I said, I repeat, I can modify every single thing here. I can add some text. I can change the structure. I also have on the right side here elements that I can just add into it. So I have diagrams here. Now I'm just going to pick anything which is not going to really fit into this here. But I have this infinity graph, for example, which is automatically generated. If it would make sense, probably it would be something that fits into this presentation. And the style is based on the template. Now you may think that this is not perfect and that's fine, but you have something to start with. You have something that you can just easily take and adjust to your needs, but you don't have to start from scratch. Now, if you don't like it at all, you can also just change the theme. You can say, I don't want that. I want to have something else. Like for example, let's go with this one. And just by clicking a single button, the presentation changed the entire style. Now the images of course stay the same. So they're going to fit the old style still but you can see that you can play around with every single part here so you can customize this easily and you can do a lot of stuff with AI. You can change the text, you can change the images, everything can be changed here. Now, this of course is cool if you already have some notes ready like I did, but what if you have to hold a presentation about Flask versus Django versus Fast API tomorrow in university or at work and you don't have a clue what you're talking about? What you wanna do in this case is you wanna go to generate and you wanna say, make a great, presentation about comparing Flask versus Django versus Fast API with pros, cons, and typical use cases. Let's say we want to make this six cards again, generate the outline. So now we're not even going to write the text ourselves. Now the outline itself is going to be created by Gamma. Then if you have any clue what you're talking about, you can look over this. You can see, okay, Django, full stack, batteries included. Sounds about right. Lightweight micro framework for Flask, fast API, modern, async first, perfect. You can read through that. And if it makes sense, you can just say, okay, I like this, generate. And now we can see how all of this is created from scratch again. We didn't have to provide any outline, any content, just what we have to do and the rest is based on the AI. So up here, we can see I don't like, for example, this first page, I'm going to change that I don't want to have that much text. So I'm going to take the subtitle and paste it down here. But I want to wait for this to finish before I change anything to not interfere with the AI generation process. But you can see, if you really need to save time, if you really don't have a lot of time, that is perfect for just having something to show. Now, in this case, my, for my for my taste, it has a little bit too much text. This could theoretically easily be changed by just saying here, make it shorter with this AI, but I'm going to do it myself to show you that this is possible as well. So I'm going to take this text and I'm going to remove this text and I'm going to also uh, turn this into normal text and then delete it from here. That's about it. So we can do it like this. Maybe we can also make it a bit larger heading four or something. I think that looks much better. And like this, you can just do it manually or you can say this is way too much text, make it short. So this is now editing the card with the agent. It's, this opens a chat window like in cursor, it tells me I'm running low on credits. Maybe I have to 
uh, add some more. But now you can see it modifies the whole thing. So I can go back and forth and I can see, okay, this is now shorter, I can say, make it even shorter than that. But you can you, you get the idea for how this works. Now, let me also show you that we don't need to use these AI images. If I don't like this, I can go to edit image, I can go to web image search, and then I can say, for example, flask Django fast API. And of course, I probably shouldn't be just taking one of these because these are probably copyrighted and you shouldn't use them in a presentation unless you ask the person. But theoretically, if you find an image here that belongs to you, maybe let me go to uh, free to use commercially, we're not going to find very good images here. But let's just take uh, Yeah, let's say I find a perfect image, which is this one, In this case doesn't make a lot of sense. But now I have this image here. And if I don't find an image, I can still design my own, I can go to edit image, and I can say here, upload my own image. And in my case here, I can take my video thumbnail for the recent video I had and close this and then I can fit the image, or I can change the focus point of the image like here or maybe even more than that, something like here, maybe, whatever, it's not the perfect image for this, but you get the idea. Finally, we have the in my opinion, most interesting feature, which is creating a presentation based on a document based on a paper based on an already existing presentation. So what I'm going to do here now is I'm going to click on import file or URL, I'm going to go to upload a file, and then I'm going to upload here the attention is all you need paper. So this is a PDF document with attention is all you need. And now this is going to be uploaded, I'm going to take this paper and I'm going to make a presentation based on that. So I'm going to click on continue. And here now we have the free form text of the paper, basically the entire paper with all the formulas with all the references and all the graphs in here. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to say, I want this to be minimal, I want this to have the same style as before. And I'm going to also provide now the instructions here, make a very concise and dense presentation, summarizing everything about this paper. And down here, I'm going to say I want this to be six cards long. So it's not going to be enough to cover everything, of course, but I want to have a very crash course like presentation based on this paper. So I'm going to say generate, I'm not even providing a structure here card by card, I'm just saying free form, take all of this and turn this into a presentation. And this is basically what it looks like we have here some stuff about the architecture, the results here with the different scores, the multi head attention explained the architecture components. Now it doesn't use graphs from the paper, which is interesting, because I already tried this for the preparation of this video, and it did use images from the paper. So I can show you that here in my trash. If we go in here, attention is all you need, I can click on that. And you can see here attention is all you need with a different style. And it actually used uh, graphs from the paper. So probably we need to specify that. But you get the idea, this is super, super useful. If you have to do stuff quickly, if you want it to look professional. Now, of course, I think it does make sense to still have a human in the loop to double check everything to adjust the text and graphs and everything. If you don't like something, if something is not perfect, if you see that an image with some hallucinated text is being used, then you can swap that and everything. But this is a very, very efficient way to create high quality presentations, documents, website mockups, using generative AI and keeping everything modular. So you don't have to just be content with the result because this is oftentimes what happens when you try to design something with generative AI, they give you the output, and then you reprompt it and they change 100 different things you didn't ask for. And in this way here, you can easily change the individual components. So that's it for this video today. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. Of course, don't forget to check out gamma, the link is in the description down below, you can basically do everything that we did today for free. And if you want to, if you need more credits or more powerful AI models, you can also upgrade to a paid plan. Besides that, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video. And bye.